no holiday, no mayo, but Cowser's up for the Baltimore Orioles. Let's do a prospect profile. Baseball America's J.J. Cooper and Carlos Colazzo with me, Scott Braun. So, J.J., do you like the decision by the Orioles to call up Colton Cowser to the opening day roster, but leave back Kobe Mayo and Jackson Holiday? This is a team that has really rich man problems at this point, even though they're a low revenue, uh, you know, low salary uh, team, because most teams would have all three of these guys up because these would be the slam dunks. But the Orioles are a team that has more players than they have spots right now. And this kind of it gives them time to figure it out because they do have a Santander. They do have, you know, Austin Hayes. They do have uh, a Cedric Mullins. They do have, you know, a lot of these guys. And they still have to figure out how this all fits together. But they couldn't keep Colton Kowser off this roster because, impressively for him, he has answered the biggest question they had. He really struggled. He struggled all around after he came up last year. But there was a real concerns about how well he's going to hit lefties. And then spring training, small sample size theater, all that. But he had six homers in spring training. Three of them are against lefties. That's a really encouraging sign to see a guy making that step forward, adding that polish to something that was very much kind of on his to-do list, and adding him to a lineup that already is this kind of a, one of the better lines in baseball, won 101 games last year. Well, here we go. Yeah, and Kowser is a guy who really can do everything on the baseball field. He can hit for high average. He can hit for some power. He can run. He can play all three outfield positions and play them reasonably well. I think we'll probably expect him to be an above average defender in a corner and maybe solid average in center field. Um, but he can just do a lot of things for you. And JJ mentioned the the improvements against left on left matchups. I think that'll still be something that I'm curious to see moving forward. How often does he even get opportunities to get into those left on left at bats? And then if he does get the opportunities, is it a, a real step forward and a real jump for him? Corton Kauser is a guy who, going back to his amateur days, has always been a really advanced pure hitter. He's got a great approach at the plate, like a number of Orioles prospects uh, in the system currently. Um, he was taken high in the draft because of his hitting chops, and he's continued to, to hit and to improve and to get better. And I think with a lot of players like this, Colton Kauser doesn't really jump off the page in terms of raw power, but I feel like hitters like this tend to get to a little bit more than, than maybe you think they're going to because they are such good pure hitters. They have great approaches at the plate. They're selective. They know when to fire off their A swing and when to hold back. Um, so I just think Kowser is a really well-rounded prospect, even if he's maybe not the most explosive or most exciting or high upside prospect in the system. He is older now. He's proven it at the upper minors. I think he is ready for uh, a regular full-time spot in the majors. Right. He's 24 years old, JJ. But can I make the case that young Orioles players will actually feel a lot of heat. Two reasons. One, they're going to be in the thick of a playoff, if not division race, in the AL East. Number two, there's so much competition. Like if Colton Kowser struggles out of the gate, there are too many other outfielders, both young and veteran, that are a part of the mix. Some of those guys will be gone, most likely, in the future. I don't know if we'll have a Santander, a Hayes, even maybe a Mullins in the future because there are so many young guys and maybe they're just choosing to kind of implement their payroll differently. There's also an ownership change going down, so we'll see how that plays out. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really struggle for long because they're like, we got to win games and we have too many other players here. You mentioned Holiday. You mentioned Kobe Mayo. We could mention Heston Kierstead. We could mention Connor Norby. We could keep going. There, Samuel Basayo is not that far away. He reached double A last year. There's just... Yes, you have players that you're having to basically push out of spots because, as you said, this is a team that returns almost everyone as far as their lineup from last year's team. That one, you know, that was one of the was the first uh, hundred plus game winner in the, for the Orioles have had for a very long time. So you bring everyone back from that, but then as you're trying to basically chip away and carve out your spot on the big league roster now. You're right. You you don't have much time to kind of show what you can do because if not, there's probably someone right behind you who is going to say, hey, give me that chance because I'm ready for the opportunity as well. This is a challenge that the Orioles are going to face in 2024. It's a good challenge to have, but prospects can grow stale. I, I look at a guy like a Connor Norby right now who will be headed back to AAA but already has significant AAA time. They traded a Joey Ortiz, I think, partly for the reason like this. But we're going to see a Kobe Mayo. When is he ready work on his defense a little bit, but Kowser is the guy who has earned that spot now 
And I would say if I'm him, I would look at it as I've got 200 plate appearances to kind of solidify myself here before the next wave comes up behind me. I mean, this, this might be a negative look at things, but could this hurt their system if there's this much competition? First off, Carlos, they have to pick the right players. Like they traded away Ortiz and Hall, you know, and you hope that the guys that you choose turn into the superstars and maybe they were a little bit lower on those two, right? Hmm. So there's that factor and there's just the pure competition factor, like JJ said. Some guys that shouldn't be in the minor leagues anymore that are still there waiting, marinating, and mm -hmm. they don't have a spot for them. Yeah. I mean, I think it's only beneficial for the organization. Obviously, you have to do the the job of identifying the right players to move, the right players to keep. But I think the Orioles are in a position that every other general manager and every other organization in baseball would love to be in, just having this surplus of upper minors, impactful, major league ready or very near ready talent. It's, it's a great problem to have, especially if this is going to be a team that just doesn't spend towards the middle of the market on major league payroll. If, if you have all these young players coming up, you're going to be able to flip veterans to fill some holes. Even if they were really high on guys like Deal Hall and Joey Ortiz, they brought back an ace um, by trading those players away. So they're going to have an ability to make moves and to see which players are performing, which players aren't performing. If everyone is performing, that's still fantastic for them. Trade away some guys, add some more pitching, fill some holes you need. Um, eventually, the players that are performing and playing will get a spot. They'll force their way onto the team. And the players who don't, uh, that's just the, the nature of the beast. I don't think that's too different from any other team. You just have a real strong collection of young talent in, in this system right now. So yes, there's going to be pressure on all these players to perform. But I think even if you're a top prospect in a system where you maybe see a clear opportunity, there's still the, the pressure to perform. So from the player perspective, I think it's probably business as usual. All these guys want to show that they're the guy that needs to be out there. They're not really looking at a depth chart uh, and kind of comparing themselves and wondering when their opportunity is going to come. Um, so it's a good spot to be in if you're a Baltimore fan. JJ, did the Orioles make the right call? It's very difficult, be careful right now, to criticize Mike Elias. I mean, he's looked at as at the, the, being the top dog right now, I guess. Now remember, the Orioles went through a lot of pain to get to this point. I mean, it, it was pure tanking, the buzzword that's used often in our sport, to get to this point. They were one of the worst teams. They kind of got rid of all of the talent that they had on the big league roster. They nailed some of their drafts, and they've nailed some of this development to be in this fortunate position. But right now, did they make the call by cracking spring training with Colton Kowser up and players like Mayo and Holiday waiting in the wings? It's hard not to give them the benefit of the doubt on this because, as you said, they've made so many decisions the right way over the last couple of years. It is true. Colton Kowser is an example of a player who they got, and you could say it's from tanking, because he is a top pick that they got at the point where they had already been bad and they were – they were accepting the fact that they were going to stay bad for a while until they got good. And they did get good, I would say, quickly when it finally happened. They had a pretty remarkable turnaround, one of the best turnarounds in a two-year span. We don't see teams improve by 50 games in a two-year span, which is what they did. But they also won 101 games last year before the benefits of tanking got there because pretty much last year, the guys that they had, you can say Adley Rush, McGonough, Henderson, those were 2019 draftees. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's a very fortunate position to be in. Most GMs, owners, managers, definitely fans are jealous of where the Orioles are right now. I mean, they're a juggernaut major league team and they have the best farm system too. So here comes Colton Kowser and hopefully it's for good. The 24 year olds up in the bigs subscribe to the baseball America YouTube channel for more content like this. And we'll see you on the next prospect profile.